groundwater, water tables, aquifers, there is a lot to understand as a builder. And whether you're building a coastal house like my buddy Wade Paquin or inland like I am, you really need to have a good understanding. On today's build show, master builder Wade Paquin, who builds in some crazy tough conditions, is gonna help us understand this topic. With that being said, groundwater explained. Let's get going. Hey guys, Wade Paquin with The Built Show. On this episode, we're gonna talk about groundwater. I'm sure you've heard that term, but what does it actually mean? And what's the difference between, say, an aquifer? Are we really standing on top of these invisible lakes and streams and rivers? Stay with me, we'll explain. So I'm down the pit. This is the footprint of a new custom home we're going to be building, footing start tomorrow. You can see the uh, excavated bank, the soil here. So there's a bank on my right and a bank behind me. So this is the corner. Uh, today's Monday. I was here Friday midday-ish um, checking on progress of excavation and something caught my eye. This very predominant orange line on the bank of the excavation. This is around the whole perimeter of the site here. Now I know because I've been taught this, so I have a trained eye to look for it, that that's an indication of high water table during high uh, water table or peak water table season, I should say. Why is it orange? Because those are iron deposits or rust in the water. So if you look for the, the, the uh, presence of the uh, rust deposits in the water, which is the bottom of this arrow, and measure from there to the top of grade where that grass is, that tells you what your water table is. So here, that's 30 inches. So we have a 30 inch water table. I called my engineer. I said, hey, Mike, you know, I saw some rust deposit. Looks like we have a 30 inch water table. He called the soil guy who was in the area. He confirmed, in fact, we do have a 30 inch uh, water table. Now, yes, oftentimes this is on the plan and we'll know what our water table is on this particular site. Uh, this isn't a very large home. It's a very small uh, lot. Um, and it just wasn't part of our uh, civil plan that it noted what the water table was here. So I saw this. I now know what it is. I now know that we need to be uh, very careful and diligent about how we're going to waterproof our basement. We do have a full basement here. Actually, we'll do a whole new episode uh, on foundation waterproofing with this project when we get to that point. But Water table versus aquifer. What's the difference? Why am I not standing in water now up to my stomach or my chest? Where, where's the water? Um, so let's break it down a little bit. Let's look at the two zones, your non-saturated zone and your saturated zone. Your non-saturated zone is where your water table fluctuates. The saturated zone is your aquifer, right? That's your presence of, of water at all times. Um, through cracks and voids in bedrock in different types of sand and soils. Um, there's always water in those voids and that water is pulled down to that point because of gravity, right? All water being pulled through our soils is because of gravity. It's pulling it down to the center of the earth, but it doesn't go that far because at some point the bedrock is non-porous, which is why your aquifer sits on top of the bedrock and creates that underground uh, lake or stream effect, even though that's not exactly what's going on, but that's how that aquifer stays in that zone. And then depending on the season, when you have a wet season or you know your rainy season, for us is in the fall and winter, we get a lot of precipitation, the air isn't warm, um, we don't have a lot of evaporation. So all that moisture and snow melt and ice melt, everything's going into the ground being pulled down through these soils in the non-saturated zone that have pockets in the soils and the rocks that are full with air, or oxygen. Um, so that's pulling the water down through. It's first allocated to plants and trees. And when the plants and trees say, hey, we're, we're good, we're full, we've, we've had our enough water for, for, for now, the rest of the water gets pulled down into the aquifer. And this is how the earth kind of uh, goes through that cycle. 